Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because the Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, hey, guys, uh, we're, we're, we're excited about today and we're excited about the week and we're excited about the goodness of the Lord and um i'm i'm just just overwhelmed and just convinced that we will see the goodness of the lord like we've never seen before and and i i think some of you already not only know that but you're experiencing that right now that god's turning things around with his goodness and um he's gonna do you good and make you happy I mean, you know, you, you could be sad and you could be, you know, negative Ned. Uh, you can do all those things if you want to, or you can just decide to have a, a good life and, and just, you know, and live and, and make your mind up every day, regardless of what's going on. I'm going to live. I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to enjoy life. And I'm going to live and enjoy life. And and I think that's so, so very, very, very important that we learn how to live and learn how to enjoy our lives. Praise God. So, hey, uh, make your mind up right now that uh, I'm going to I'm going to have joy today. This is the day the Lord hath made. I, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I mean, man, my day was so awesome yesterday. Even even though my team didn't win the game, you know, it was it was still entertaining. And you know, I'm just I'm just learning that, you know, in every issue of life, I can choose to go a negative route or or that go a a, a really good route, and uh, and and a God route. I'd like to say. Uh, but this is this is going to be an amazing time this morning. I'm going to go ahead and get started just a little early. We send blessings your way. But I want I want to talk to you about a question that I had, you know, uh, about about your mouth. Every now and then you need to judge your mouth. Sometimes people can become sensitive to insensitive to um, using your words right, you know. And, you know, we we, we we're Christians, but then we don't watch our mouth. And sometimes when you don't watch your mouth, you end up in a situation that's not a really good situation, uh, according to the word of God. I want to reemphasize that my focus as a man of God is is living the Christ life, living the grace life. Um, you know, my job's not to get involved in all the fights in the world. My, my, my job is to live the, the grace life and, and, and to teach other people about living the grace life and figuring out how to walk in love in every situation. And if there's one area that I pray to God to help me to walk in love and to grow and mature in that love. And so, um, yeah, man. So we're going to talk about the mouth and we're going to we're going to come together this morning and judge our mouths. When I point a finger at anybody, we're just all coming together and say, hmm, let me take a look at my mouth. Let me see what's been happening, because uh, if you're not careful, uh, you know, Satan can have this real, um, you know, stealth kind of plan. And you're you're saying stuff in your mouth that man that that stuff you you didn't mean to say that i mean you you you, you become insensitive in in some cases uh when you open your mouth you know could you find yourself in slander you know thank god for grace but if i know that my mouth is leading towards slander then i want to make sure that i correct that so this is going to be a, a really straightforward time Watch your mouth. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. Ready? I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. 
I declare, you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. In the name of Jesus, I am Psalms 91 equipped. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. All right, so uh, I want to talk to you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some scriptures as we go along, but let's get into this today. I want to use my time really wisely today um, to get into this. Uh, have you heard the old adage? Y'all know everybody's heard this before. Sticks and stones, come on, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Um, I apologize, but that's just not true. <laughs> that's that's not true at all. Words can do a great deal of damage uh, to those who have been slandered. And slander, let's just talk about what it is. It, Sometimes we, we say words and we forget the meanings of them, but slander is making a false verbal statement that damages someone's reputation. Slander is a false verbal statement that damages someone's reputation. I just, I don't want to do that as a Christian. I don't want to do that as a man of God. I, I don't, I don't want to become so insensitive and, and, and careless with my mouth that I'm making a false verbal statement that ends up damaging someone's reputation. Now, here's the deal. I don't think I would purposely just make a false verbal statement about somebody. But what happens sometimes is, you, you know, such and so, such and so said this and such, so, such and so said that. And I think the problem comes is when we repeat something that we heard somebody say, and then we think, well, you know, they've got good character. So, you know, it's okay for me to repeat it. Um, and then you won't even repeat who told you. And then that person you told said something. And then by the time it got to the third or fourth person, it became facts. And I don't want to, I just don't want to, find out, I get to heaven and find out, man, I started this. I opened my mouth and spoke something I heard and it destroyed someone's reputation. Wow. See, I started looking at that. I said, I need to really look at this. I mean, when you're watching your mouth, I need to really look at this. Slander difference, it differs slightly from liable. Uh, in that liable is a written defamation of character, but slander is only spoken, okay? So you, libel is a written definition of character, 
but slander is is only spoken. So the Bible says a whole lot. Oh, it blew my mind. A whole lot about slander in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. I mean, the New Te the Old Testament, Proverbs 10, 18 says a person that slanders is a fool. And and first Peter two and one even talks about, man, we need to put away, you know, that's that type of behavior. And thank God that we're under grace. But I mean, we also want to mature. We want to we want to get better. We want to we want our mouth and our our conversations to get better. You know, slander is so high on God's list of wrongs that even in the old covenant, he included it in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20 and 16. It was actually the, the ninth commandment that says, you know, you shall not watch this bear false witness against your neighbor. So they obviously had some issues of slander even back in those days, you know, um, bearing false witness includes slander. And I'm like, why? Because of the untruths being being spread. Slander is simply lying about someone with the intent of, of causing others to view them in a negative light. Who, what what grace based Christian wants to do that? I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't want to want to. You know, first of all, I remember when Taffy uh, did a message on lying. You know, and slander is first of all just simply lying. Um, and it's it's lying about someone. Uh, you know, you say, well, I didn't know that was a lie. I'm just saying what somebody told me. Whoa, bro. It's like, you know, that's that's just something we need to judge ourselves. And that's what we're talking about this today. Slander is simply lying about someone with the intent of causing others to view that person in a negative light. We, we don't want to get involved in that. We don't want to be a, a part of that. Slander is malicious lying. And God hates lying. Now. Here's one thing I want you to think about. Since God is the author of truth, I mean, according to John 14, 6, he's the author of truth. First John 5, 6, he's the author of truth. Anything untrue is in opposition to his nature. And therefore, it would be something that's repulsive to him. And both slander and gossip are wrong. And scriptures often condemn those two together. Uh, and so, whew, I got to take a deep breath just talking about this. But First Corinthians, uh, in, and uh, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter twelve twenty, slander takes gossip to a whole new a whole new level. Though it, we're not even talking about gossip, but slander takes gossip to a whole new level. Gossip collects someone's secret. Gossip collects somebody's secrets, and then it passes them to others. That's what gossip does. It collects somebody's secret and then it passes it to others. But slander makes its own secrets. Slander makes up its own secrets and they broadcast them wherever they will do the most harm. Ooh. Boy, we're seeing a lot of that, right? Let me, let me say that again. Gossip collects someone's secrets and then they pass them to others. But slander makes up its own secrets and broadcasts them wherever it, it will do the most harm. That's a that's a that's wickedness. That I mean, no 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 matter how you look at it. Now, the New Testament it um, it references slander as a part of our old sinful nature. I mean, this is this is big time. I mean, I'm telling you, we, we look at the Bible and the Bible will let us know what we need to do. The New Testament references slander as part of our old sin, sin, sinful nature. Slander has no place in the life of a grace filled person. It has no place in the lives when we become new creations in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I want to watch my mouth. Slander should not be a part of 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 of, of, of my my new life as a Christian. Second Corinthians 5, 17. No way. You know, let me give you another scripture. Colossians chapter three, um, verses seven through eight says, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. That's before we got saved. 
But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. And he gives a list. Anger, rage, malice. Watch this. Slander, filth, filthy language from your lips. You know, when we talk about being a Christian and we're talking about being born again and having a new way of living. And then you find this scripture in Colossians 3, 7 and 8. It says, dude, you, you, you now that you you no longer live what, what, how you used to live, get rid of these things. Wow. That, that really got my attention. Our words are to be dedicated to the glory of God, just as our bodies are dedicated to the glory of God. Our words should be dedicated to the glory of God, just as our bodies. So those those who uh, those who know God, and and that's us, that's us, family. Those who know God, we have a responsibility to refrain from slander. We know God. We have a responsibility to refrain from slander. Um, I think it is. I think it's in James three. Verses nine and nine through 10, he says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. He says, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. And then he says, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. This should not be. You know, we're preaching the gospel. Oh, man, I'm a preacher. I'm witnessing somebody to the word of God. In order, and then out of the same mouth, I'm repeating a slanderous thing that's ruining somebody's reputation. Slander is one practice, I'm sure of, that must be put to death if we intend to follow Jesus. I, I personal opinion. I just think if we're going to follow Jesus, slander is one of those things that that we've got to we got to put it away. We got to put it away, and 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 ask God to help you. You know, could it be that sometimes you're opening your mouth up and repeating something you heard and repeating a slander that you heard, and it's like, Lord, help me to recognize this. I don't I don't want to I don't want to keep this in my life. In Romans chapter one. In verse 28 through 32, Paul lists many traits of a deprived mind. And when he lists that, slander is included in that list down there in verse 30. So when we slander others, we're, we're choosing to step out of the path that God designed for us. When we slander others, we've made a choice. I'm going to step out of the path, the one that God has designed for me. Now, he'll not... He will not participate. I, I, I believe this. I don't believe God's going to participate with us in our attempts to destroy someone else with words. He, he's not going to do that. Um, are you listening to me now? I mean, this is, you know, I, I was kind of like wondering, I should I be talking about this? I, but I thought about, wait a minute, we're family. I, when, when this whole deal is about when God deals with me in my heart about something and, I'm, and I come to the place where, that I would um, pray about, you know, sharing that with you. But I don't think he's going to participate with us in our attempts to destroy someone else with our words. Do you? I mean, think about that. We're Christians, man. We're Christians. Um, I just don't think he will. Slander comes from the heart. And when we are tempted to speak untruths about someone, we should first examine our own hearts to see what ugly root is producing those desires. Wow. Jesus said something, um, Matthew 15 and verse 18 and 19. Jesus said, but the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, Adul adultery comes out of the heart, sexual immorality comes out of the heart, theft, false testimony, and slander. It, it, it comes out of the heart. 
Dude, that that's that's some serious stuff right there, man. That is some really serious stuff. Um, but I believe that God, He wants us to see that slandering someone is an indicator that our hearts are not right with Him. Ooh. So so hey, you know, I, I yeah, I don't I, I want to be honest as I as I judge my life and as I you know because we're we're talking about maturing in God, we're talking about growing in the Lord and all those kind of things. And dude, I I just I don't want to walk around deceived. My prayer is Lord help me not to deceive myself. And um, you know I don't want me slandering somebody to be an indication that my heart's not right with God. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care who the persons are. I don't care what the situation is. I just, you know, it, 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 to me, my opinion again, is that according to what I just read to you, me slandering somebody is indicating that something's not right with my heart. Something's not right in me. Oh, God help us. God help us. You know, a desire to slander can spring from a root of bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12 and 15 gives us some, some insight on that. A desire to slander may spring forth from some root of bitterness. It may spring forth from some unresolved hurt. You're hurt, so you, you go to slander. It, it may spring from unforgiveness. Watch this. It may spring from jealousy or from others, from other sins of the heart. It, it's saying something. And like we said last week, when we do things, um, most of the time it, it's, you're telling on yourself or you're you're saying to other people, hey, guys, look at me. What I just did is indicating that something's going on in my heart. Wow. And and that's something that's going on in your heart. It ends up destroying lives. It ends up hurting people. Um, it's something that, you know, as Christian people, we have to examine. We've got to look at. And we've got to ask ourselves, honestly, folks, why am or why did I do that? Why did I allow myself to walk in that way and to do something like that? Um, it's, it's important. And, and again, I want to remind you, the fruit of slander is that it damages the perception of another individual in the mind of one or more people. Wow. Wow. You know, I often wonder, you know, um, you know, in times past when somebody said something and, uh, about me and I didn't, you know, I didn't know they said it about me. I often wonder how many people have chosen to not pay attention to me or not like me because somebody has put something in their mind and it was it was it was damaging to that person's perception. And I. And I certainly don't want to do that same thing that has been done to me. And 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 ask ask yourself that question: Do I want to do the same thing that possibly has been done to me? I mean, sometimes slanderous is obvious, and at times it it at times it flies beneath the surface, and it's not easily detected. Sometimes the heart of a person is not pure. Like I said, it's an art issue, and like I said, jealousy. Of, of a friend, uh, jealousy of a close friend causes you to open your mouth and say something like that. This is, it's crazy. It, I, I just thought I, I'd bring it to your attention. It, it's an atmosphere of it that's out there and it's never okay for Christians to participate. It's never okay for Christians to participate. A lot of things I hear about folks, um, I mean, it's like, wow, um, I, I have to pause and say, wait a minute, how do I, how do I know that's true or not? And and in in some cases, I call the people up. I don't mean to be 
you know, bring uh, uh, the stress on them, but I'm calling them up. I'm like, hey, man, I heard this and I just I'm calling you uh, to see. And and about 99 percent of the time, they're like, no, that ain't what I did. That I didn't do that. I didn't say that. And I just like, wow. But when something's wrong in the hearts of men, slender may be one of the ways that they respond out of the hurt and the jealousy and stuff like that. It's like um, when people who have been traumatized and they've been through trauma, sometimes they display that trauma in different ways. And I think slander is, is the same way. It, there's a root to slander and that root is found in your heart. Uh, man, I want to be pleasing in God's sight. I know I'm not perfect and I know, you know, you're not perfect, but dude, God is through this grace wants to help us and he wants to grow us up and he wants to mature us. And I think it does help when teachings like this can kind of say, hey, man, you have you taken a look at this? Because what it's going to do is going to cause us to cause us to look deeper into our heart. And when you're lashing out at somebody, you're mad at somebody, you'll, go, you'll look to your heart. You'll look to your heart. You won't make up an excuse for why you did it. You'll look to your heart. And I think we're living in a day where a lot of people are making up an excuse to violate the word of God. It's like, no, that's not how you do that. You don't make up an excuse to violate the word of God. It, 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 it's clear. We're Christians. And... Um, I tell you what, this generation of of preachers, they really get this. I've been listening to some of them and man, they are really on top of this stuff. And I'm, I'm just like so blessed. They're like, if we're if you're going to really be a follower of Christ, then we're not talking about in one day and out the next day and in one day. We're, we're talking about being a really follower of Christ. So we get into word, we find out what it means to be a follower of Christ. And then we ask God through his grace that he begins to show us and develop us and mature us uh, and ripen us. I mean, God wants to use us, but sometimes we're just not, we're not ripe fruit. We're not, we haven't been ripened enough and, and, and God wants to use us. But if we keep finding excuses to violate the word of God and not be who God called us to be, um, Man, that's just not cool. That's not cool. And I just, you know, I decided I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of that. I mean, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to be a part of anything that slanders people, and um, you know, to ruin their good name or ruin their reputation. I I just would rather be quiet and let people say what they want to say and think whatever they want to think because I really the, there is a a key, I think, to handling slander. So somebody said, well, what do you do? What do you do if you have been slandered? What have you do if you've been hurt? Well, what I've done for 40, for 41 years, you know, pretty much uh, the best way to deal with slander is to, is to pray about it. Oh, pastor, that's, don't you think that's like a, uh, you know, a cheap little answer? No, man. Um, God will either remove it and show the lie up and, and and share the truth um he'll either remove it or he'll remove the sting from it so it doesn't bother you that much and i've had him do both in some cases he removed the whole deal and the lie that was told those who heard the lie heard the truth and god kind of did his wonderful way of vindicating things or he took the sting away from it where it was just like you know whatever and you just go on and do what you need to do our attempts, our own attempts uh, at clearing ourselves are usually a failure. It, it's like, uh, I've lived with this for a while, a man that defends himself will remain average. And uh, it's kind of like, be quiet and let let your advocate plead your cause. And, and, and that's what I've done. People used to say, why don't you say something? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? And I'm like, mm, nah, because I understand people have already decided to believe what they want to believe. And you just kind of just kind of go forward and say, nah, I'm going to pray about it. And God will either remove it or he'll take the sting out of it. And you'll go forth and, and do what you need to do. The world is going to become more dark. 
and more wicked in the way it thinks. It's going to become more dark and more wicked in the way uh, that it speaks. And we'll even try to use scripture to justify wickedness. You know, the Bible already talked about that. Um, so we're, we're just not going to do that. We're going to be the Christians that God called us to be. We're going to love and we're going to allow the power of love to stand up strong against anything that confronts us. And, uh, you know, all is going to be well. Uh, anyway, listen, I know it's Monday and I didn't mean to be that deep with you today. <laughs> I, I just thought we got to talk about this. And this is the, the, the it's just so awesome to have this time with you where I can really come and share my heart and share things with you that I think will be a blessing to your life. And like I said, you know, people are going to do what they want to do, like they want to do it. But at least, you know, I consider you, you know, family, at least I can come back and in family, just impart some things that, that I think would help you out and continue to help you down the path. Remember we're coming to Los Angeles. We're moving up to Thanksgiving. So we've tried to uh, share it before the holidays, but we're coming to Los Angeles January the 27th. If you haven't registered for that meeting, register for it. We got something special for for the you know this time that we do. Uh, we're going to do it live in um, Los Angeles and, and have the rest of the world come in on us as we share our confession moments there. And then the nighttime we'll be talking about you know, this life of grace. Uh, somebody says, well, what is this? It's a grace reunion. It's a grace family reunion. It's an opportunity to go from city to city and 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 invite the families to come. And uh, if, if you are a believer of the grace of God and, and uh, you've been growing in the grace of God, then this family reunion is for you. And we just look so forward to seeing you there in January 27th, Los Angeles. And then you can check our website out for all of the, we got six of these to six cities and um, meeting all of our family and um, God bless you. Hey, have a great day today. We love you. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you, everybody. Bye-bye.